right, so another lemma. So if we have um, an adjunction f between c and d, uh, it could be here, g, uh, with co units eta and epsilon, so as defined here, um, if g is a map from the image of something in f uh, in c to y, uh, then g bar is the following map. It goes from x to g f of x to g of y. Y and it's maps that we have. So it's this is eta of x and this is g of g, g, apl oh, g applied to g. Okay, and similarly, if f is from x to something to the image of something in d, then f bar is a map from, okay, it has to be from f of x. And that goes to uh, f of g of y. And that goes to y. And this is f applied to f. And this is epsilon of y. OK. So for f bar, This is um, okay. F bar. We do the same trick we did here. So F bar is well. We take F, which is from x to um, g of y, and then we just sort of put the identity in here. So this is the identity on g of y. So f bar is this bar because this is just f. All right. Now again, using this naturality condition that we um, had before, so I'll just move the camera a bit. So using this naturality condition, um, we have uh, that this is the map f of x, f of g, y, f of f. And this is the identity on g, y bar, which is epsilon y. And that's precisely what we wanted. So. As an exercise, So the g bar is as above. And again, that's going to require the naturality condition that I left up to you at the very start. All right. Now I might leave off this board now. All right, so here's a theorem. Uh, let's have a pair of functors like this. There is a bijection between The 
the set of adjunctions. It's between, uh, no, let's, let's not write that. Let's write. Uh, let's write between F and G. So this can be the empty set if they're not a, a joint pair of. Um, and the set of pairs eta epsilon um, of natural transformations um, satisfying the triangle um, triangle identities. And I guess I should say that eta is from the identity on C to GF, and epsilon is uh, from FG to the identity on D. All right. So the point here is that um, specifying an adjunction in the way we did before and specifying a unit and a co-unit pair satisfying these identities is the same thing. So um, a pair of natural transformations of this form satisfying the triangle identities um, is an equally good definition of an adjunction. So if we started with that, then we could prove the other direction um, if, we, if we wanted to. All right. So we've seen that an adjunction gives us a co-unit, a, a co-unit, unit, co-unit pair. Uh, so given, given such a pair, epsilon eta, or eta epsilon, um, this uh, lemma that we had, this lemma that we just did, uh, which I've now moved off the board. So I'm gonna put it back. This lemma. Um, is giving us a bijection between these uh, pairs of maps. And so, in fact, we've just seen that, um, that, that there's an associated, I'm sorry, that we've seen that if there's an associated adjunction, then it's a unique associated adjunction. So from this pair, um, if there's an adjunction, it's unique. So we, all we have to do is show the existence of an adjunction from, from this pair. Um, so we define the following. We're going to define a functor bar from maps from fx to y to maps from x to gy. We're going to define it by g in here maps to g bar, where I'm calling g bar gg composed with eta x. All right, so the, the information that we're starting with, if we start on this side, is this pair of functors and these natural transformations. So this is something that we, we have the pieces of this, so we can define this. <coughs> and similarly, we define another bar. Um, by CXGY to map, se sending maps from X to GY to maps from F of X to Y. And we define it by taking a map F in here and sending it to what we're calling F bar, and that's going to be epsilon Y composed with F of F. All right, here's a claim slash exercise that I am too lazy to prove. Uh, these are mutually inverse and also natural in x and y. Um, 
So that's like this claim is the thing that we need to show. So when I say these are mutually inverse, I'm building the um, I'm building the bijection between home sets that's part of an adjunction. Uh, so like uh, I don't know, this one, say this bar is giving me this this phi here of the adjunction. And all you need to show is that these are mutually inverse, so that this is, in fact, a bijection between the home sets. Um, and you need to show that it's natural. All right. Um, and finally, I, uh, I should have given myself more space. Um, does anyone mind if I erase this blue bit here? You still? Oh, that's all right. Um, I'm going to just write down here. So we can also think about uh, the set of natural transformations eta from the identity on C to GF such that eta x from x to g f of x is initial in the comma category x over g for all objects x and c. OK. So when I say x here, because x is some object, what I'm saying is the functor from the category 1 with one object in the identity morphism into uh, c, right? So, so this is um, this comma category has this sort of this diagram. Um, maybe I'll put it here, uh, where we have a functor from 1 into C. And this is, well, maybe I'll do it the other way. So we have a functor from 1 into C, which I'm calling x for the object, because all it does is pick out the object. And I have this functor from D to C, which is G. Uh, and then I, that's the, the comma category has the, the maps and the, the maps, the objects and maps determined by these functors, as we've talked about common categories before. Can I erase the blue bit now? OK. So uh, in fact, there's also a bijection like this. But I'm not going to talk about that. That's just a thing to be aware of. Um, what did I write here? I'm not going to spend any time in this, on this, but you should, um, if you feel like it. I've given you a lot of homework. Um, homework. I've, I've left a lot of things undone. Sorry? Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, so as, because the mic doesn't pick up. As Rob just said, this is another way of saying that you only need to specify a unit. Um, provided it is a unit. All right, so now we're going to do some algebraic topology. Um, does anyone care if I erase this board? No, OK. Cool. I'm going to move this across a bit. So we're going to talk about some adjunctions that are important in algebraic topology. So we have the loop suspension junction. All right, so we're going to uh, take some pointed topological space, x, x naught, in the category of pointed topological spaces. So this is a topological space, and this is some base point. 
And maps in this category are continuous maps between topological spaces that send the base point to the base point. All right, so we have two functors. One I'm going to call sigma. This is from, so these are both functors from uh, pointed top to itself. And this is going to send a, uh, a pointed topological space to, I'm going to write, a suspension of x, uh, which has, OK, so it's, how can I write this? It's the, um, you take x, you cross it with the interval, and then you quotient by the um, by the equivalence relation, taking x comma one, making that equivalent to the base point comma any point in the interval, and make that equivalent to x comma zero. All right. So this is um, a topological space. So with um, and I have to specify a base point, and the base point is the equivalence class of, say, x naught naught. Um, so what are we doing here? We're doing some topology, so we should maybe think a little bit about the topology. We have a space x. <coughs> And then we cross it with the interval. So oh, maybe I should have been consistent. All right. These are two copies of x. So that's x cross the interval. Um, the base point of the interval is here. The base point of my space is, say, here. All right. So first, quotienting uh, x, comma, 1 means identifying Every, every point in this top slice. And identifying x comma 0 means identifying every point in this bottom slice. So I'm going to go, I'm going to, go to here. And I'm going to start by just quotienting this slice together and this slice together. And so what I end up with is, so I have a copy of x. Oh. I have, say, the middle, the middle copy of x, so x at x cross a half. Um, and then this, everything at the top gets quotiented to one point. And everything at the bottom gets quotiented to one point. OK, so I've squished the top and I've squished the bottom. Um, and to say. Um, and each point, each, each slice between this point and this point, but not including those two points, is like a copy of x. So this, this drawing is like, it's true up to homeomorphism, but um, only up to homeomorphism. All right. So, but as we know, because we're doing category theory, and homeomorphism is the notion of isomorphism in the category of topological spaces, that's fine. Um, all right, but I also want to quotient. So I quotient to this top and this bottom, but I'm actually saying that they're equivalent to each other. So I need to join these points up. But I've also said that this base point cross any point in the, in the interval also gets quotient together. So that is this, is, this was the base point. So the base point, so I'm saying quotient all of this line together. And so what I'm doing is I'm, I'm, I squish the, this line to a point. And that's, that's what this is. And I can't really draw it from there. So that's, um, that's what the, su the suspension is. Um, some might say reduced suspension. Um, so before, before quotienting this, all of this together is actually what you would say is the unreduced suspension. 
and then squishing this together is what you would call the reduced suspension. Uh, depends on x. Um, all right. So this is a functor. We need to say what it does on maps. Um, it sends this to. Um, so we we have some map from f of x to y. That that gives us a map from f cross i to y cross i, which is you do f on the x component and you do the identity on i. Um, and then that gives you a map uh, from, this, from the reduced suspension of x to the reduced suspension of y by quotienting, which is to say, if you quotient by some by, by something consistently in topological spaces, it gives you a well-defined map. Right? You just you send the equivalence classes in X to the equivalence class in Y, um, and for this particular quotienting, that's a well-defined map. And I'm not going to say anything about that. And, um, all right. So, okay, we have a. We want a junction. So I've got one functor up on the board. We need another functor. So maybe I'll just use up some space. <coughs> so this is the suspension functor. Now we want the loops functor or loop space functor. So this also is from pointed top to pointed top. And it's going to take our based space. Oh, also, when I said when I we quotient all of this together, that that thing became the base point. So all of these things are in the equivalence class of the base point in this suspension. Okay. Uh, so we had x x naught some pointed space, and we want to send that to loops x. OK, and this should be a pointed topological space. So this thing is the set of loops in x based at x0. So x f of 0 equals f of 1 equals x0. The base point is the constant loop at x0. So it's the function from the continuous map from the interval to x that just sends the whole interval to x naught. Um, and sort of it's clear what the topology on this thing should be. It's sort of inherited from, from sort of standard constructions on topological spaces. The, um, the topology on this is the uh, compact open topology. Not going to explain what that is, but it's a topology that you can put on sets of maps, on sets of continuous maps. Um, and it's something that I have to look up every time I, because I can never remember it off the top of my head. It's kind of annoying. All right, but it's a, it, the point is that this set of loops based based at some point is a topological space, and there's like a good notion of what that topology should be. This is the continuous map from the interval to x that sends the whole interval to x0. Because it has to be a point in this topological space. A point in this topological space is a loop. This is the loop that is the base point of this topological space. <coughs> All right. Now we have an adjunction, top star from, OK. So suspension is left adjoint to loops, which means that we have this uh, bijection of homesteads. All right. And this map, OK, what is this bijection? In this direction, it takes 
OK, so we want to map from the suspension to y. And we want to, well, we want a map from x to loops in y. And we're starting with a map from the suspension of x to y. And what do we do? Well, we take x and we map that to the loop, which sends t to f of x t. This is another example of currying, because it's the same map again. Um, yeah. Um, and note the, the, the fact that uh, this is a loop um, comes from the fact that when we, we squished everything down to down, down on, on this individual point. Um, and you can think about that a bit if you, if you feel like it. It's a good thing to think about. There are lots of good things to think about. All right. Uh, maybe we should say what happens in the other direction. So if we have some g, so, that, so I'm actually going to show that this is a bijection. I'm not going to show naturality, but I'm actually going to show this is a bijection by specifying a map this way and a map this way. So if I have a map g, I want to send that. So I have a map from x to loops in y, and I want to send that to a map from the suspension of x to y. And a map from the suspension of x to y takes in a pair of coordinates, because it, it, takes, in, it takes in a pair of x and t from here. Um, and yes, some of them have to be the same. Um, and it sends them to g of x of t. All right, what's happening here? g of x is a loop. So g of x is a map from the interval to y. So this is, this is a map from the interval to y. And so we can then apply, apply it to, to uh, an element of the interval. OK. Um, and let's see, uh, if, hmm. yeah, maybe I'm not going to spend a bit of time thinking about why this is, this is, um, you, you, should, you should check that this is well defined on, well, the only equivalence class of interest really is this one equivalence class. Everything else is like on its own. It's just this, all this stuff is quotient together. Um, all right, let's see that these are, these are mutually inverse. So we want to have f bar bar. This is going to be, OK. So I'm saying that this is the bar construction. Oh, this is, no, I'm not saying this is bar construction. This is, this is f bar, and this is g bar. So um, f, f bar is, it sends x to t to f of x t bar. All right. And then this sends x t to OK, so I'm starting with this map. If I apply x, x to this, x to, I'm, so I'm starting with this map, which sends x to this map. So if I start with an x, I get this back. And then if I apply t to that, I get f of x t. So this map sends the pair x t to f of x t. But that's precisely the map we started with there. OK. And then in the other direction, we have g bar bar. And let's see. So g bar is defined by this thing. So we have the pair xt. And we're sending that to g of x applied to t. And we want the bar of that. OK. This thing sends x. So now we're over here, and we want to go to here. So it sends x 
to um, to t to g x t. Um, so we started here with a map. We started here with a map that sends x to loops in y. We took it to the map which sends xt to t of the loop that x goes to under g. And now we go from x to the map that sends t to the point in the loop corresponding to x. But that's the loop. That's, that's x. That's, that's t of that loop that corresponds to x. And so that's g. Um, and maybe, again, this might take a bit of parsing to, to, to satisfy yourself that that's true. But um, yeah, I think we should move on to the next. <coughs> so this is the loop suspension adjunction. It's very important in uh, algebraic topology. Um, it's uh, similar notions are very important in um, homological algebra and algebraic geometry. Um, and they came from here. Um, so you can, for instance, use this. You can do a one-line proof that the fundamental group of the circle is Z, but uh, like you're just shifting. It's just shifting difficulty around. Like at some point, you kind of still have to prove it. Um, but yes, I mean it's it's relevant. Uh, um, yeah. I, uh, all right. So the next um, adjunction I want to talk about, I'm going to go into much less detail with this uh, because I don't have time. Um, we have geometric realization, which is left adjoint to uh, singular complex. All right, so we've previously defined this functor s dot, which takes topological spaces to simplicial sets, where um, where s dot x of say n, and so the nth the nth simplicial um, the n simplices of this simplicial set, uh, the set of continuous maps from the, um, the topological n simplex into x. And we define the, the, the differentials, and I'm not going to do that again. Um, so we also have this, uh, this other functor, which, I'm gonna, which is called geometric realization which goes from simplicial sets to topological spaces. And what does this thing do? OK, it takes a simplicial set, x dot, and it sends it to big coproduct in topological spaces. And a coproduct in topological spaces is just a disjoint union of topological spaces. You just Take all the topological, you take the underlying sets of all the to topological spaces, you keep the same open and closed sets, and I guess you have to add in that the, the total thing is, is open um, and close under the necessary thing. But the, but the important things, yeah. <coughs> it's just a disjoint union of topological spaces. All right, so what are these topological spaces? They are. Xn 
across the topological and simplex. And then we have to do some questioning. All right, what's happening here? So Xn, this is a simple, X is a simplicial set. So Xn is just a set. It doesn't have a topology on it. So we treat Xn as a set with a discrete topology on it. So for each n simplex, or n, n simplicity in, in x, so for each element of xn, we put in a copy of the topological n simplex. So for each three simplex in here, we put in a tetrahedra, like just floating around, because this is all disjoint at the moment. Um, and then this quotienting relation sort of attaches all of these, all of these things together according to the, um, according to the, the face and degeneracy maps in your simplicial set. Um, so for example, if, if like, if alpha is in the, is in the, um, so if you have like alpha is a, uh, is a two simplex in here and beta is a three simplex in here, then um, such that, such that like D of, I don't know, but let's say D D1 of beta is equal to alpha. Well, OK, so what's beta? Beta is some. Um, Beta is some tetrahedra. Like in this disjoint union, it corresponds to some tetrahedra. So I'm going to call I'm going to call it beta, and alpha corresponds to some two simplex alpha. And if I, when I defined the topological simplicity, um, uh, the topological n simplices, I said that they the standard topological n simplices. I said that they started with um, like you could order the, the the vertices, sort of based on a choice of ordering on the um, basis of R n plus one. Um, then saying that this this the face map applied to this element of the set x three gives me x two tells me to glue this this floating thing onto the the first face of this and the the way we number the faces is by doing it opposite to the opposite to the um, the first vertex so this face gets mapped onto this uh, gets attached to that and so there are other there are some uh, there are other relations in this quotient but the point is that we we take this simplicial set for every n simplex, we take a copy of the topological n simplex, and then we just glue them all together according to the relations in here. Um, yeah, so I'm not going to go into a lot of detail with this. The point is that geometric realization is left adjoint to taking this, this singular complex. So, so top from the geometric realization of some x dot to maps out of this geometric realization into some space are the same as maps between simplicial sets of x dot and uh, x dot y. OK. Uh, and again, this is a very important functor in algebraic topology. Um, but for now, we're just going to use this, uh, and I'm going to put up a definition of homology on the board. Um, so this is something we could have talked about earlier. This isn't, 
So I'm going a, a bit off the adjoint thing now, um, just briefly, to talk about this. Um, OK, so we have the following collection of functors. We go from top to simplicial set to simplicial abelian group to chain complexes uh, bounded below. OK, so um, this is going to be s dot. So this is the singular complex um, functor. So um, what's a simplicial abelian group? Recall that previously we defined uh, if you have some category C, you have SC is um, the category whose, whose objects are functors from delta op into C and whose morphisms are natural transformations between them. So when we did simplicial sets, we were like, OK, for each natural number, we have a set. And we have a bunch of faces that have relations. Uh, we have a bunch of face and degeneracy maps that have relations. Doing it with, with simplicial abelian groups is the same thing. You say, OK, for each n, we have an abelian group. And now we have maps that have to be group homomorphisms between them, uh, satisfying the same simplicial relations. Um, yeah, so it's almost the same thing as the simplicial set. Um, but we do it in, in groups instead. OK, so the second functor I'm going to write z for is linearization. So this is, um, for, each simplicial, for each simplicial set, right, in here, uh, for each, each set of simplices in here, you take that set of simplices, so you take x2, say, and then you just generate an abelian group with it. So you take those elements and say, OK, I'm taking the abelian group with these as generators. So it's just z plus the things, yeah. So, so if, if, I ha if like x2 was, um, was the set uh, alpha beta, then after applying this functor to x2, so I apply this functor to x dot, and then the second, the, the um, the two simplices of that would be the group like that. Um, so it's just formal sums of A and B, basically. Formal, formal, linear, formal linear combinations over Z. All right. And then lastly, we have this functor, M. And I'm going to spend a bit of time talking about this. So M needs to take. a simplicial abelian group, and it's going to take us to a chain complex, and it's going to take us to the chain complex where um, in the nth spot, we just have xn. So we're keeping the same abelian groups. This Here we had some abelian groups and like a bunch of maps between them. And now we still have those same abelian groups, but now we only want one map in one direction for the differential because yeah so and then we have that dn is going to be the sum from i equals 0 to n i'm going to take the alternating sum of di's at n so recall that when we defined um, a simplicial set, we had like x0, x1, uh, x2, um, no, let's 
see we want this way, this way, this way, this way, and this way, and so on. And here we had d0, s0, d1, d0, s0, d1, s1, d2. Okay. Now we're going to forget the simply the the degeneracy maps, and we're just using the face maps. And so, for example, d2, which goes from x2 to x1. Um, so, so actually, here I, I'm using these indices. So I still want like a one here, and a zero here, and a one here, and a, and a two here, and a one here, and a two here, and a one here, and a two here. Um, this map is going to be this. Uh, the sum of d0 2 minus d1 2 plus d2 2, for instance. Um, and so now we have a now, and this this something to check is that this defines a chain complex. In particular, you need that the two differentials composed together is the zero map, um, and it's just some algebraic manipulation involving like this to show that. I'm not going to do that here. <coughs> All right, and it takes a map from f x dot to y dot, uh, and it just sends it to f, right? Because the information of this natural transformation, um, which is what a map between simplicial sets is, or simplicial abelian groups is, is just the information of a map between xn and yn for all n. But the information of a map between chain complexes is also just a map between xn and yn for all n. Um, and you should check that like that commutes with our new face maps. But it does. It does because it commutes with each of these individually. All right. Now, homology. Given a chain complex, we'll say bounded below, but not this is, doesn't have to be in this uh, anymore. Uh, the map, we have a functor HN from chain complexes to abelian groups that takes um, my chain complex, x bullet. And it takes it to the kernel of dn over the image of dn plus 1. So what's happening here? I have my chain complex. Uh, I have, let's see, x n plus 1 xn, xn minus 1, and so on. This is dn plus 1. Markers. This is dn plus 1. This is dn. This composes to 0. So in particular, the image of this map is contained in the kernel of this map. Uh, and is a subgroup of it, and so we can take this quotient. Um, and so, the so the point one of the points is that um, homology is something you can take of a complex. It's a purely algebraic thing. There's no spaces involved here. If I ignore everything that went before, this is just a functor, and so I don't need to start with a topological space to define the homology of something. Um, however, I did start up here, and I have this composition of functors that takes us to bounded below, uh, bounded, bounded below um, complexes. And so when we take homology in algebraic topology, like when we take standard singular homology, this is the sequence of um, functors that we're taking. So yes, it's a functor from top to abelian groups. But it factors 
through the simplicial sets, simplicial abelian groups, chain complexes, and then two abelian groups. Um, all right. And finally, uh, this is a, we can also write H star, which goes from these chain complexes to grab, which is graded abelian groups. Uh, and it just takes x naught to um, the direct sum from i equals 0 to infinity of hi of x bullet. Um, so I mean, the point is we can, we can take the sum of the, the, the direct sum of all these homology groups, and that's still a functor. Yes? <coughs> right, because, because this, this quote goes to 0, and so, and so the image is contained in the kernel. And the image, the image, the image of a of a group is a subgroup. Yeah, yeah. I was wondering about. Oh, yeah, it's a it's a billion. Yeah. Okay. Um, so I probably won't get to much of this, but um, so that's all the algebraic topology I wanted to talk about today. And now I want to say some final things about adjunctions. Final. I want to say some some more things about adjunctions before we finish for the day. <coughs> so here is sort of a fun slash important example of uh, adjunctions, of an adjunction that I haven't done yet. So maybe I should say it's an example, but anyway. Um, so if uh, all functors f, if all f from some j to c um, have limits, uh, or j, so j is a small category, so um, c should be um, I don't know if there are any conditions on C. No, I don't think so. All right. So uh, if all functors from some small category, some fixed small category into C have limits, then uh, let's see. Delta is left adjoint to limb. All right. Now, I haven't said what these things are. So uh, delta is a functor from C to the categories of functors from J into C. And it's, it's the functor that takes an object in C and sends it to the constant functor at x. So I start with some object here. I need a functor from j into c. And the functor that I get is the functor that sends all objects in j to x and all morphisms in j to the identity at x. All right. And now we want limb. And obviously, I want it to be in the other direction, because I want this to be an adjoint pair. So I want it to be from functors from j into c. And I want it to spit out an object c. Oh, actually, before I say that, I should say on if I have a map from x to y, this gets sent under this to the natural transformation 
which I'm going to call, um, what should I call it? Let's call it delta f. Whose components on objects j and j go from delta j to, wait, no, go from uh, delta x of j to delta y of j. But this is x, and this is y, so this is just going to be f. If I start with a map from x to y, I get a map between the constant functors at x and y that's just f on every component. And then the composition, nat the naturality squares are trivially satisfied because everything is an identity. Um, OK, now I want to talk about the function in the other direction, which is lim from functors from j to c to c. And it's going to send an object x. Sorry, it's going to send a functor f. It's going to send it to the limit of f. So this, isn't, this doesn't make sense if we don't have these limits for every functor in this functor category. <coughs> and now I need to say what it does on natural transformations. So if I have a natural transformation from f to g, what's it going to do? Well, now we get to do a fun diagram. So if I have, hmm, I need more colors. If I say that uh, j looks like this, say. Um, then, if I think about a functor from uh, j into c, you can think about that functor as being an image of j in the category c. So this, I'm going to think of this as the image of f, and I'm going to think of this as the image of g, what's a natural transformation between these things? Well, a natural transformation between these things is something that looks like this. So that all the squares that have two green sides opposite and two red sides opposite have to commute. That's the information of a natural transformation. OK, now suppose, suppose that I have a limit of f. What's a limit of f? A limit of f is, so this is the limit, a limit of f. Well, this is a universal, co -co, uh, universal cone over f, right? So it's like this such that any triangle with two blue sides and one red side has to commute. All right, but I can also ask about a limit of g. So if I have a limit of g, I'm going to put it here. This has the same condition down here, right? OK. <coughs> now what do I want? So the point is that if you take from the limit of f, if you take each of these blue legs followed by a green leg, like each of these blue legs has one green leg that follows it, 
That's a cone over the image of G. But the limit of G is the terminal cone over, over the image of G. And so I get a unique map here. And that's the map that this corresponds to. So I'm going to call it, I don't know, phi, so I don't have to. Because words are difficult, so this goes to phi. All right, cool. So we have, we have um, two functors in opposite directions. And maybe you want to see that they're adjoints. So what am I saying? I'm saying that what do I need for these to be adjoints? So I want to say that natural transformations between delta x. Oh, and I don't know if I s actually said this at any point, um, but when we're talking about like left and right adjoints, the uh, The, the left is like which side it's on in the home bijection. This is, this is left because it's here, and this is right because it's here. I don't think I actually said that, but that's, that's one of the reasons why I like the hom definition, because it's like clear which one's right and which one's left. Um, I, I think it's become more clear to me lately what it is when I see unit co-unit, but this is still immediately obvious. Um, well, like immediately clear. Uh, okay. So, what do I want to say? Um, so, if I have a natural transformation, we'll call it eta again. Oh, maybe we'll give it a different name. Let's say gamma from delta x to y, what is such a thing? Well, for every component of j, I need a map, gamma j, going from delta x of j to y of j. But this is x, right? So here, I'm saying that I have a map. So having a natural transformation is the same as having a map from x to y of j. For all j in the thing. So if I have some other thing in j, maybe say i, then I also have gamma i. But this is a natural transformation, so it needs to commute. There's a commutative square. But the commutative square on this side is equality. So I can collapse that down to a triangle. And on the bottom, well, I need this to commute for all maps f from j to i. But that's precisely, this is now precisely the information of a cone over y, over the functor y, from the object x. So this is a cone. So a natural transformation of this form is a cone over y. But a cone over y corresponds to maps from that object into the limit. And so this is an adjoint pair. All right, so um, I'm not going to get time to justify this, uh, but I definitely don't want to stop this without saying it. Um, so one, uh, co-limit is uh, left adjoint to the continuous, to, to this here. So, so we have, maybe I'll write this here. We have uh, j, c, and then we have the delta here. 
And then we have maps back. And this is contingent on it having all uh, limits or colimits of that shape, where the shape is the, J, is the small J diagram. Uh, and then we have uh, lim here and colim here. And the argument for this is dual. Like, you actually you take this diagram and you like flip it around, and then you, um, and and that's a good exercise. Again, any any time you see a proof in like category theory, and it's shown in one direction, and they're like, oh, it, the the converse follows by the dual. Like, yes, that's like formally true, but it's it's a good exercise to do the dual argument because it makes you go through the argument and it, you get practice at, um, at these types of arguments and at dualizing arguments. Um, OK, so the last thing I wanted to say was uh, Rappel. All right, and this is right adjoints. Reserve limits. Reserve limits. The dual is also true, that is, left adjoints preserve colimits, but this is easier to remember, and you can derive the other thing from remembering this. Um, one consequence of this is, for instance, that, um, so consequence. Consequence. All right. Uh, um, so in vector spaces, we also have this tensor homo junction. Um, tensor we have this tensor homo junction. So, and the point is that this is a left adjoint, so it preserves limits. Uh, it preserves co-limits. So in particular, it preserves coproducts because a coproduct is a type of colimit. So left adjoints preserve colimits tells us that um, that the coproduct of v and w as vector spaces tensored with some x is the same thing as uh, as v tensored with x coproduct w tensored with x. I think I did that in the right direction. Yeah, OK. Uh, I think I'm going to stop there. Thanks, guys.